Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're here, Marathon Weekend kickoff, and we're here with our guest, Lisa Nickerson. Good morning. Who's got some wonderful ties to Hopkinton we're gonna learn all about. So we're yeah. really just sort of meeting officially kind of for the first time. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, so, um, we've gotten to know Lisa a little bit over well, the last couple of years. And, and so, I met yeah. you last year. Right. And stuff, and you right. know, she's done some work in town, but her connections are a little bit deeper than that. Um, her brother lives in town. Oh, okay. And so she's been coming to Hoppington for years yep. and getting to know the community and actually has a lot of roots in the community. Yeah. Um, but because of business, she made a connection in town well, that has led to something very personal and a personal mission and, and why she's been supporting the marathon and I'd yeah. like to tell that story a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, welcome. We're happy Thank to you. have you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Then we'll talk more about you later. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, tell you us met more. somebody in town and you found a personal connection. Right. Tell us right. about that. So, um, so I am in Hopkinton quite a bit for my family, and uh, I have I do everything from visit to holding the signs for my sister-in-law Lori when she won school committee, and oh, um, okay. I, you know, right in the center of town. So, um, so I'm really proud of her for that, and Rob for everything they've done with the schools. Um, so they were I, at Kenyon Day yesterday. Oh, you know, actually, Rob had that on Facebook about it's how awesome. great it was. Isn't that it's awesome. amazing. Yeah, I've yeah. never been, but my kids loved it. Yeah. Yeah. For, oh. for years, that has been at a big event at the Elmwood School. And it's like a ticker tape thing. Like they, they blow confetti in, they fly, they run into oh, dry ice. That's and amazing. Like that. And um, I, I mean, I've been fortunate that I got to go all four years my kids were in that school. Um, because I was a volunteer in the school and they let so, so many So you in. actually got to I, see I've it. been there four times when my kids were there and then I've been there several times as a, a guest of a VIP. Yeah. You know, I might have been escorting someone in. And, and so been, our town manager spoke to the Kenyans in their native language the first time. Oh, oh wow. You, well, when I hear the it. town manager um, and when he went to the first event. So that I was know, very special. Actually, awards. we ran into one of the Kenyans yesterday at Bittersweet before she was heading over there. Oh, cool. Ah. So, so you, I mean, that so was I your was, family that got to see that yesterday, but you met through your family I met the Benford actually no I, I met the Benfords through a business contact ah, actually okay um, and um, th often in some of the projects that I work on in real estate mm -hmm. various uh, local community foundations or initiatives they'll come and ask for funding or support from right. uh, various real estate developers and what is your business let's just put it out there I oh, so I own a public relations and marketing agency okay and it's and called Nickerson and uh, <laughs> oh, very and she actually just moved her office from Waltham to Boston yep, so, so she's oh. in the heart of Boston right now yeah nice. right great view 470 Atlantic we love it oh, we love it nice. oh that's nice. really yeah. nice yeah, that really. Is. yeah. yeah. She's, so she's got a great staff yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So we've done so a lot with Darlene recently. So, yeah. so, um, so talk again, about the again, family. So that you met. Right. So somebody um, working with uh, Keep Smiling for Abby had reached out to the developer that I was working with to look for support um, because they were looking for various community uh, initiatives and opportunities to support. And so they tend to come to me then, and I sort through them and I sort of vet out what we're going to do and how we're going to support it and the dollars and. Um, and when I got the Keep and you Smile. have a big heart, <laughs> right, right, right. And um, so when we got the Keep Smiling one, it hit me very quickly because I am anaphylactic also, and okay. I have food allergies, and um, and have had very serious um, reactions and have gone into anaphylactic shock. Um, the worst, Ooh, the worst scary. being with my brother right there and at a barbecue, you, wasn't it? We actually it was a BC tailgate. And right. um, so it was after a football game, mm -hmm. and um, there were some cookies on the table and. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's so close to tragic because I was 26, I had a nine month old. Um, I'd known for, since I was a kid, that I was not allergic, but my throat would get itchy. And I think that one of the things that the Benfords, and I know I really want to support them in this, are trying to help people understand is that just because you haven't had a reaction doesn't mean you won't. Right. right. And it's, just because it yeah. only happens like this, or this only happens, that doesn't mean next time won't be entirely different. Right. And so again, if you think about it, I just had a, had a you child. En you ended up in an ambulance. Oh yeah, well yeah. But so finish, let, yeah, let me get this because mm -hmm. um, here I was 26. I wasn't a kid. Um, I had had a nut allergy as long as I could remember. But not and severe, just, just my throat bothersome. Would itch. My throat would itch. Yeah. A lot of people get, and, yeah, this is such good and messaging. So, and I saw an allergist regularly because mm -hmm. I have asthma. I saw my OBGYN regularly because I just had a baby. Mm -hmm. I saw my general doctor. I mean, I, 
it wasn't like I didn't yeah. see doctors regularly. Right. And anyone had just said to me, well, you should be careful, your throat could close. And that's all I knew about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I would be careful. I have to tell you, you, mm -hmm. you gave me goosebumps because what people don't understand is with those kinds of allergies, not mm -hmm. your sneezing, hay fever allergies, but when you have, um, uh, it, it can be foodborne, it can be um, uh, agent reactive uh, born, but if you have any kind of physical reaction where you get hives or throat closing, mm -hmm. each subsequent exposure it actually is getting worse. Right. You don't right. realize it. Sure. And so people don't understand that, oh, it's not been a big deal. Right. That next one could be that big deal. Right. And we don't know what makes the difference. Right. And we don't know no. why. Mm -hmm. And so uh, back to, you know, I'm 26 and I'm at a tailgate and there were some cookies on the table and I couldn't, I wasn't sure if there were nuts in them, but I never had to be that careful. Yeah. Right. My throat right. would get itchy, itchy. right? right. It's just, yeah. you know, big no, deal. Itchy, no big you know, deal. You know, so I actually had, it was a really little cookie, and my... Um, oh, was it good at least? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you know what it looked like? It looked like a Girl Scout Samoa cookie, mm -hmm. actually. And so I thought it was coconut on yeah. the top, which I'm fine with. Um, I turned to my, my then husband, and I asked him to take a bite. I said, are there nuts in that? I mean, that's how careful I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, are there nuts in that? He said, no, I don't think so. And I popped the rest of the cookie in my mouth. And um, right away, my throat got so uncomfortable and itchy and sort of crazy. And... Um, and my brother was there, and Mark, my, my ex-husband was there, and they're looking at me like, what do we do? And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so we very quickly my throat started closing and I started to go into shock. And we happened to be um, very close to the side of, if you're familiar with Sheffield at BC, mm -hmm. we yeah. were right at the garage. So we were, okay. we were parked right at the garage. And, um, and so I went through the garage and I was yelling to the police officers, like, my throat's closing, my throat's closing. And they grabbed me and they were, it's all sort of a blur, but they were yelling over the ambulance because I had no idea you what was were happening. Lucky. And at least it's an ambulance that it on where site. It did. Yeah, yeah, the ambulance was right there. And I remember them throwing me in there and pulling my shirt open and putting things all over me. And they were trying to get IVs going and they couldn't get IVs going because my blood pressure had already collapsed. Oh my mm. God. So they hit me with Epi and I couldn't breathe. and. They were trying to hold oxygen on me, and I was kind of hitting people, trying to get them off because they, I didn't want anything on my face. You were, can't you catch were, your breath. Well, you're in panic. But. It was it was total. It was crazy. And um, so as we were going, um, they grabbed my my brother and Mark, put them in the ambulance. We were racing over to St. Elizabeth's, and it really went from being chaotic to then me just fading out, like really feeling like I was fading out. And what's happening is your body's shutting down and doesn't mm. know that medicine's going to save you. And I can hear the EMTs, the panic, and this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working. And they're trying to keep me talking. And I'm just sort of going, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'd sort of given up of like. You're just you know, floating. Right, that exactly. Point, so and I, I remember them saying, this isn't working, hit her again, and then just another epi. And, um, and so they, um, they pulled into St. Elizabeth's and um, you know the team jumped on me. And I don't remember much until a little while later. And. Uh, they had me stabilized, but people couldn't leave the room for hours. And my brother looked at me and he goes, so should we call mom and dad now? <laughs> and I was like, um, then I said, not yet. <laughs> I said, I need a little what more time. Do now, having yeah. had that experience. So too. after that, I met with, um, so there were police that were there, and um, they told me that by the time they saw me, I'd actually already sort of blown Ooh. up, like my face and hives. And um, so it happened very, very quickly. Um, everybody told me, including so many doctors after, that it was so close. Mm -hmm. They said, had there been any more traffic going to St. Elizabeth's, had you been on any side, the other side of the field, right. had you been anywhere else in that stadium, you, you would here. not have made it. Mm -hmm. They said it was, it was that close. Right. And so there is a post-traumatic stress sure. from that. Oh, you know, gotcha. Of, um, right, right. Of, you know, every day I know I can eat the wrong thing. Yep. Yeah. And it's happened a number of times since. And so recently I was, um, I'm gonna jump a little bit, but I was with the Benfords and we were at the Visa Institute and they were uh, reporting on the, the advances that they'd made based on the donations and the, of uh, Keep Smiling for Abby to Vs. And when I was sitting at the table, one of the things I asked all of these researchers and doctors and, and the Benfords, I said, has anybody here actually been in shock before? And no one had. And I said, Do it. I have. Yeah. I and, have. I, and so maybe you can, you can um, understand that 
I said, you know, I think I'm a, I'm a smart woman and I'm well educated and I've had multiple experiences now. Mm -hmm. And every time when it starts, I make the wrong decision. Well, I don't grab and, my epi. Uh, I don't, I, I tell people been, to wait that I, I want to see. That I've been with, I've been with. I panic. Yep. And, and I'm the one that has been like, okay, do you have an EpiPen? No. Does anybody have Benadryl? You know, right. and, and have been through the, like, we got to do the triage now. But I, I grew up in a medical me. family, so yeah. I got yeah. sort You're of like, I suffer. Yeah, I'm, I have yeah. anaphylaxic allergies, too. Mine aren't, as of now, they're not nut allergies, but they're all nutted fruits. So mm -hmm. they'd be like peaches, plums, oh. anything with a pit in it that yeah. I, and stuff. And so, yeah, about two weeks ago, I went, had, they were able to control it with, with Benadryl. We pulled up to the firehouse, but Benadryl, we, oh, I'd yeah, already sucked in Benadryl. Yeah, this back. was two weeks ago. Benadryl mm -hmm. and like a lot of water, and I was able to, but it basically the hives came in so fast and not be able to breathe that it yeah. feels like your face is burning and your yeah. throat. Now, I will tell you Ooh. that if Stephen Benford was sitting here, he would tell you that it wouldn't matter they controlled it with Benadryl because it actually stays in your system, and he would say you absolutely have to epi because you don't know if it's I had that. I had, I opened the glove box, I had the epi in my pen, and I just, I was right. You make the wrong decision. Right. And I made Somebody the wrong else decision. should do it. Right. My and husband why did you pulled, hesitate? I don't know. <laughs> my husband pulled who up. Who wants to my husband, themselves, my son, right? I mean, oh, yeah. it, it, this is and why it, my son, I have done the My son's right. in the back seat. My husband's the person driving. doesn't want to. He pulls up right. to the firehouse. Well, going to be better. Well, one at a time, yeah. folks. So, you know, we... Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had just picked up takeout in Ashland, yep. and I had sat at the bar, had a margarita and some salsa with Andrew, and then Andrew was in the back seat, was. and well, we found out what it was, a little bit more of what it was, and then um, literally from the time we got from downtown Ashland to where West Inertia was, mm -hmm. I couldn't breathe. And by then, we're p Michael's shoving Benadryl down me because we keep him in the car. Right. I had the EpiPen in, the, right. in my hand. He went straight to the firehouse, pulled up front, and I'm like, don't get out. They're going to make me pull down my pants and give me a shot. And I'm like, and I'm like just give me water. Just and give me water. I, and I and said to Jolly, you can do it right through, through your jeans, right? No, they said, no. don't pull down. It's a needle, because I've never even it's, seen it's a, yes. it's a needle. Yeah. It, I mean, I, have, I carry one. It's kind of funny, because I have to do a fund, I'm going to be doing a fundraiser for Carolyn Dykema, and it's a, at a pollinating garden. <laughs> and um, I'm like, it's going to be the first one that I actually have to make sure that it's actually on my body. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, that's the other one is bees and stuff. But, but, I, but my point is, the people around you need to know one where your EpiPen is because like you said right when you're in it you actually make bad decisions right and it's your people around you that often are the ones that say they need to know how to administer it and to do it right and to not hesitate oh. nobody has died from using an EpiPen and they didn't need it right right <laughs> but nobody have died from not having it exactly. when they needed it exactly. so, so, so but, but my point is nobody has died because somebody overreacted and right. used the EpiPen right right, yeah. right. and that is just and, like and I'm sorry I'm I get sitting there and I think Oh, I'm overreacting. I'm no, making a no, scene. No. I'm like, I'm creating yeah. drama. Okay. And, and when you're at a restaurant or somewhere out, sometimes you don't want to be that person. Or I've plenty of times not wanted to be um, that person at a table who I'm like, oh, these are my allergies, you right. know? Especially if it's a business setting. Yeah. Because then everyone wants to talk about your allergies. Yeah. And I, you know? And so there are times that... Um, I may say it to them ahead of time, but even now restaurants will come to the table and they sort of make a big deal out of it. So what they're finding is people then don't say anything because they don't want to right. be Talk that person, that. right? So, I, so the, I, I, I understand that. Yeah. And so I feel there's a really important role with the people you're with. Yes. So I always go, oh no, she has a food allergy. Mm -hmm. Because I find you don't want to be the one making the scene, and right. you really need a bestie right. Right. to stand up for you. Right. Right. And and I say that with great yeah. respect. And like I said, you need the bestie to know where the epipen is and let them overreact right. because you don't want to. I don't think I'd call anybody out, but I would encourage anybody with allergies to not be shy. Don't, yeah. you know, right. don't so, be shy. Right. I right. know that you've mentioned the Benford's name a few times, yeah. and a lot of us in the community know who they are, and but David let's and Let's tell that story. And so, be, my kids were in school with um, both Abby. the Ben, the Abby. So um, you basically you have been an athlete. You've trained for the marathon before. Mm -hmm. You've run the marathon before. Said years ago you were never going to run again. Now you're back <laughs> at it again. So how many and times? One, Excuse me. How many this times? This is fifth. 
Wow. This yeah. is five. And so and, I was um, on the board, or I am on the board, of um, Housing Families in Malden. And I've run four times for them. Okay. And after meeting the Benfords, I actually I told them that this would be my cause. Mm -hmm. And so, that I felt that so, it was my my job and my duty. So since let's I lived explain. To, to I think everybody yeah. knows the cause. However, there are well, maybe some say people who the that charity don't. is. It's yeah. Keep Smiling for Abby, and it's uh, Keep Smiling without a G, the number four, Abby A B B I E, and we'll, that their foundation. We'll actually have it um, printed up on the show. Their daughter and passed away from anaphylactic shock right. two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The, the, the day they were having her 16th birthday that yeah. night. Yeah, and and it was just she consumed something, and there was no EpiPen or anything. No, 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 no. Yeah, there was. There was. Oh, no, nobody she, knew. No, no. She no. They do. Oh, oh she just yeah. was a yeah. tragic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 they no. thought she was they, having an asthma attack. Right. They well, did. But they were saying they, she, did, they she, she epied. She oh. was epied. Yes. Oh, and wow. She was absolutely epied. Her yeah. parents. Everyone did everything right for Abby. Oh. Yeah. It, was it was just it was just too fast. Oh. Everything was done right for her. Okay, yeah. sorry. I thought the, the yeah. and from the time that they epied her and called 911 it was only 6 minutes mm -hmm. and she'd already gone into cardiac arrest. Right. And so, I mean she they kept her at the hospital for several days and then yeah, it just wasn't going to last. Let me too yeah. just say that on page 14 of the Independent there's a wonderful full page article on the um, keep smiling. charity, keep smiling um, for Abby, and more about Lisa, and encourage you to read. This and, is a great and Samantha addition. Lee, who's the other yeah, runner yeah. for there's Keep Smiling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's a another friend of the family. There's, there's another runner that's running for Keep Smiling, and that's Samantha Lee. And we've got a lot of runners for, that are on the Real Housewives of Hopkinton. And at the end, I'll do a shout out for all of them. But um, because you know. This, the past few weeks, we've actually done a lot of focus on the marathon mm -hmm. leading up to it. We've had an Arthur on. We had, you know, the person who runs Girls on the Run and talking about the Bobby Gibb and the book and everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Tim Kildoff on talking about 26.2 yep. and, you know, these beads that will be at the, on the Common with Confidence beads. Um, that, And we've had, you know, Anne Michelle, who runs for Project Just Because, and mm -hmm. Jeannie Von Baca before, yep. Yep. who actually, what their experience was coming out of the marathon three years ago, and this is one Boston day. Right, right. So it makes it all that more special, but because it was a real personal connection also with myself, with anaphylaxis, <laughs> our friendship, I really wanted... I, to um, feature you. Oh, it is. Yeah. Thank to you. Feature you, but also you know, let people know ways of helping the uh, Bedford Families Charity. Sure. One is, you know, supporting the two runners, and yeah. the other is upcoming in May. They have a derby day. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that's May 7th. Yes. And it's at the Warren Center. It's a fun afternoon. You can bring kids, everything else. Yeah. It's prior to the race. It's prior to the race. But it's, it's a kid friendly event. Yeah. Mm. So, what I, if you don't mind, I'd love to no, talk please. about Project Abbey, um, which is yes. what all of this money uh, goes towards. So right. Not only do they, um, are they, you know, supporting research mm -hmm. and trying to educate people more, like Darlene and myself, to actually epi ourselves. <laughs> um, but, they're working with the Wies Institute at Harvard, so they've really partnered with the best of the best in the world. And the Wies Institute is um, for, um, uh, they're creating a new device that will identify that you're going into anaphylactic shock before you even know you are. Yeah. Oh. So somebody like Darlene and myself, it, mm -hmm. it's going to go off. And it's going to immediately epi you. Um, so you're oh, it's a wearable it's a that wearable. it automatically. Oh, yep. almost, almost like diabetics have. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it will. So uh, like a pump. we don't have the choice yes. as to it, whether, oh, should I or shouldn't I? It does It's doesn't. going to recognize that you're I going into shock. I have good with you. That is amazing. And it will Bluetooth 911 your location. Wow. Oh, my God. So those, that time, those minutes, everything. And, and will this be coming out in the near future? Or is that well, in, they uh, are. It's in research. research. So that was the meeting that we did just recently where we got to see where they were with it and we got to tour the different uh, the labs and what they were doing and what they how they thought it might work and so, that's what this money goes to so the, the, what is interesting and scary is that um, so again my anaphylactic reaction was 15 years ago mm -hmm. in the past 15 years anaphylaxis the number of people who are anaphylactic has doubled I was gonna say is so, this a new trend or yeah something? so or 15 just, no. million Americans that they know of are anaphylactic but that's doubled in 15 years wow. so what are we doing Right? Mm -hmm. To our bodies, to our right. environment, exactly. to our food that's causing us, we don't know. Mm -hmm. So we have to treat it until they can solve it. So all these kids, all these adults, all these people suddenly have these allergies, you don't always know how to react. And having all those EpiPens in the nurse's office doesn't do you a heck of a lot of good when those right. kids are on the on the playground, playground or they're in the class. Like, there's still time to get it right. to them. And they're right? actually not allowed to carry them with them. That's the thing. In public right. schools, 
Right. Like if I if I was in Hoppington High School right now, I'm not allowed to have my EpiPen in my backpack. I wonder right. why. Be, well, because it's medicine, and because someone else right. could take it, and someone else could hurt it. Right. Like, there are and times you won't have it when you need it. And, right. and that they, you know, they always think like, well, we can get to a nurse within like three to four minutes. But you only have you six. May not have. And that's you have it. six Time. minutes of anaphylaxis. So, um, so I think that this device is is so important, and wow. that's what this money is going toward. And I think that anybody who knows anybody who has a latex, a, med a medicine, mm -hmm. or a food allergy yeah. would be all over this and saying, wow, this is going to save lives. And this is, is really, really important. And so I'm so glad you're I'm, sharing. I'm, I'm blessed to not have allergies. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, just hearing this, I had read your story before about mm -hmm. being at Boston College. My daughter graduated there. And just the luck of you know, being where you were. Right. And, you know, and then the tragedy of Abby, it's just, and I have you know, relatives, kids who have the allergies, and mm -hmm. it's scary, and it's my good to have lost, this information. My mother lost her best friend yeah. to an anaphylaxic attack. Right. Wow. Um, her, you know, wow. her husband was a merchant marine, her son was at school, and she had it at home alone. Right. Yeah. And again, looking even at Abby's case, they did epi her. And, mm -hmm. you know, so... Uh, but you know, she did think she was having an asthma attack at first. Mm -hmm. So had she had the device, would there have been a different outcome? Because she would have been epied faster, sooner, minutes earlier. Yeah. Um, so, Whew. you know, I mean, so well, this is why it's so important. And of course, this is a Hopkinton family, and it's the marathon. Right. And yeah. so I think it all really that. ties yep. back into what yep. you're and, what you're and doing. how much this family has put a devastating tragedy to try to do good Positive. moving forward, right. and really trying to change it for other people. Right. Mm -hmm. I think they will have a booth at the marathon yes. on the common. Yes. Yeah. Um, they they typically do. It's very much an awareness. I don't have booth, my bracelet on today, but, but, um, they, but they'll have to keep Abby bracelets, um, hats. Oh, oh good. But do yeah. stop by if you're out this weekend. Um, check it out. Um, if you live you in know, Hopkinton you know and you're not out this weekend, that's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if exactly. not only if people personally want to support, but they know of companies that would support or yes. Um, yes. corporate sponsorships. We're talking to a lot of various right. companies who are t taking it very seriously and really looking at it and, and are actually excited to get involved. It, it yeah. really is a, a, a huge issue when you, you know. That affects everybody. You know, when you talk about um, the millions and I don't know what it is, you know, it's like one in but it is a high number and it is increasing and like I said you might start out with a nominal oh you know I feel slightly itchy right but the next time it's itchy and it just yeah. keeps and many people don't even know like and you until, you well, didn't I, know I didn't know and until and you're actually, actually in it you really don't know what it feels like it no, just and is. actually every time for me it's been a little different sometimes it's the throat sometimes it's hives yeah, sometimes just, it's yeah. um you know i get this flush of like heat yep, yep. and yeah. um so I get stuff right here sometimes like right here like the rash might start right yep. here on my chest i'll get so itchy like if my scalp starts to get itchy oh, i'm you like start oh to i know Wow. I know. Yeah, so I each time it's get a little, little different. Ivy sometimes, just, you know. <laughs> or maybe it's just right. psychosomatic. <laughs> I'm gonna send wow. this picture to Courtney to post yeah. up later. But you know, when when you get a keep smiling for Abby thing, uh, bracelet or anything like that, it's neat if you go someplace and things like that. Take a picture with it, email it to the, oh, the yes. foundation, yep. and it's showing that you know the love of Abby is going around the world, yep. and it's actually right. building yep. awareness. People see the charity, see the link, and maybe they go on and donate. They may go on to the Amazon Smile site and decide to, hey, I'm going to shop there anyhow, and I need laundry detergent and a vacuum and you know, a new blouse, and I might as well give 5% of it to keep smiling for Abby. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I'd also like to give a lot of credit to the Benfords. I mean, I've sat in so many meetings with them now, and they're talking about this over and over and over every day right. to people, and I, I can't imagine my children are the same age. and. Um, and I, I give them a lot of credit that they didn't, they've taken this tragedy and they don't want anybody else to go through this. And they think that there's an opportunity for change. So I think that that's That is that really point. cool. Kudos to them and to you for yeah. coming out, telling your story and supporting them. And well, I feel very, I'm very fortunate. I'm very blessed and, um, and I'm here. Yes. And so I, yes. I told them this is my duty, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's my duty. I'm gonna read well, off yeah. a list of runners and it's a, and I have to look at the paper to do some of this, but. So Lisa's Keep Smiling for Abby, along with Samantha Lee, uh, Wave 4. And Wave 4 is actually going to be popular with Real Housewives and um, a lot of Hopkinton uh, charity runners. We've got Lisa Brown running for HCA. We've got Anne Michelle Dragsbeck um, for Project Just, Just Because. because Maureen yeah. Tumbleton is actually a, a regular runner. Uh, 
Charlotte Bradshaw is running for Metro West YMCA. Leah Holmes is running for the Library Foundation. Katie Davenport is a is a qualified runner. Christina McPherson is a qualified runner. Carolyn uh, Ball is running for the Hoppington Women's Club. Linda McCormick is running. Oh, she's running under her maiden name, Orthlip, and um, I don't know what charity she's running for. Karen, <laughs> Carrie Desenal, and I have Jennifer Green running for Spalding Rehab are among wow. just some of the Real Housewives. And if we well, missed I'm you, sorry. sorry. But, but, but you know what's, um, what's fabulous? I mean, you listed that list of names, and we may not have even gotten them all. And then on the heels of having Bobby and I'm gonna Gibb in town, who was the first woman to run 50 mm -hmm. years ago. She was, and she yeah. wasn't official. She hopped in yeah, to kind of prove a point right. that women could indeed run a marathon. So, and and I, I went to a dinner that honored her the other night, and Bill Rogers was there, and uh, Ambie Burford, who wrote the book on... Um, First Lady's Running. Yeah, let's hold that up. Okay. And um, what was um, First cool about was she told her story of how she came out oh, from cool. California, took a Greyhound bus for three days, and ate nothing but nuts and apples, <laughs> and uh, you know, showed up and called her parents, come get me, I'm going to run the marathon. And they thought they were nuts, but her mother drove, drove her out here to do it. She hid in a Fort Cynthia bush, jumped out and did it. And they didn't push. <laughs> <laughs> and she was what? and she was actually qualified to run. That was yeah. the thing. She was qualified. She was fast enough. And she actually went on and ran in so this is nineteen sixty six. She went on and uh, that year they following year they allowed women. She won in sixty seven as a woman runner and she wow. won again in sixty eight. So she won those she did um, go ahead and run New York years later. We're, um, we're getting close to finish. What tell the us other about final things. One other thing I want to say is that, you know, the be marathon shuttle at um, Hoppy and State Park shuttle at uh, South Street. Please don't try to drive downtown. <laughs> Roads are closing at seven. A.M. For first wave with wheelchairs and stuff is starting at eight fifty a.m. You got to hang out though because the wave four with all those women and a lot of the charity runners and hopping runners is at eleven fifteen. So these waves are going on yeah, and on and on better. all morning. Yeah. Come a morning. And, um, yeah. it's supposed to be good. Do you want to share about this real oh, quick? Yeah, be sure. We're excited. So this this independent uh, issue is wonderful. And so there's an ad for the Real Hopkinson Housewives that uh, it's open to all women and men from Hopkinton and anywhere to join the website, uh, get information, get deals and discounts, and um, support what we're doing. Um, net proceeds go to different charities, and we're excited about that. And so it's that's, one yeah. Boston day. Everyone do something good. Support Keith Smile for Abby. Yeah. Lisa, thanks for being with us. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for this joining great. us, everyone. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jen Belisi from Golden Pond Assisted Living in Hopkinton. Staying active is essential to happy and healthy aging. Golden Pond has activities for seniors and people of every age. There is a diverse range of opportunities to be had. We've made some friendships, not acquaintances. If you'd like to participate in any of Golden Pond's upcoming events, visit the events page on Golden Pond's website or call 508-435-1250 for more information. We hope to see you soon.